Good evening. I'm your host, Jack Remington of Jack Remington Political Analyst. I got part of my little home studio back. Also, I must confess that this debate was a far much better debate than the slugfest we watched last week, the WWF smackdown between President Donald Trump and <laughs> former Vice President Joe Biden. And people were very disappointed, including myself. And I gave it a rating of three out of 10. Okay, this one I am actually giving a nine out of 10. I'm gonna tell you why, because a lot of information was covered. I thought Kamala Harris, despite her lies and despite her missteps, I felt she held herself better than any other debate she had earlier this year. She gets a couple points for that, but the honorable, the great Mike Pence, the former governor of Indiana, he, he saves the day and he gets up off the mat. He lost the first couple rounds. In, in, in this 15 round fight, I always use the base as a 15 round fight. And my basis for that is the Ken Norton, the WBC heavyweight champion versus the challenger unbeaten Larry Holmes in that June 9th, 1978, 15 round slugfest, the best heavyweight fight I've ever seen in my life. It was dog eat dog. That's my standard one I use for debates. So in this slugfest, I got Kamala Harris winning the first two rounds. Barely. She was pretty strong because of the coronavirus pandemic, and she did blame Trump. But let's get into some more specifics. First off, the, this moderator, was she was much better than the communist Chris Wallace, who asked Donald Trump in 2016 the same question about denouncing white supremacy. Now, you, don't take my word for any of this. You go look it up for yourself. David Rubin just put out a great 31-minute video that covers this in a couple other topics. But Chris Wallace, a moderator for last week, had asked then candidate Donald Trump, would he denounce white supremacy? I had even forgotten about that. But this is really strange how this keeps reoccurring over and over again. But that's for another video for another day. I expected Kamala Chameleon Heels Up Harris to inflect and say things that has to do with racism, sexism, and the orange man bad mantra. That's all, that's all they really have. And she got the benefit of the very first question. And what does she use? The card she uses is the orange man bad. She's blaming Donald Trump for the 200,000 deaths in this country from the coronavirus, okay? What would a Biden administration do in January and February that a Trump administration wouldn't do? Would you impose new lockdowns for businesses and schools and hotspots, a federal mandate to wear masks? You have two minutes to respond without interruption. Thank you, Susan. Well, the American people have witnessed what is the greatest failure of any presidential administration in the history of our country. She actually started setting the tone against herself for the entire debate because of that opening statement. And I expected something of those three political cards of the either the racism, the sexism, and orange man bad. She did not disappoint me. Her animations and smirks, Vice President Mike Pence, the Honorable Mike Pence, was presidential. He looked it, he talked it, his tone, his demeanor was presidential, backed by facts, not feelings. Facts. Why I like the Honorable Mike Pence is because the second year uh, of this administration, under that witch hunter of justice, Brett Kavanaugh, Mike Pence made a public statement. He goes, this is the very reason why I'm never alone or filmed alone or talking alone, any female other than my wife or my daughters at any time in, in my public service life. And he took tremendous ridicule. People mocked him for that, okay, because he didn't want to give the appearance of impropriety. I mean. That, that's what we strive for, is, is to eliminate all appearances of impropriety. Me thinks that the goal of any vice presidential debate is to show the world that you, the vice president or the vice president nominee, has the chops to step into that role of president, the leader of the free world, should the unfortunate event happen that you have to step in because of the, of the death or the otherwise incapacitation of the sitting president. Um, you can just think JFK and LBJ had to step, step on Air Force One and he was given the oath of office and Jackie Kennedy was standing right next to him when it happened. I mean, could you imagine how, how she felt about that? Her husband just getting shot. On this stage as vice president, Michael Pence, he made his case 100% in my opinion. Uh, Kamala Harris did not. Uh, she took a couple steps back and we'll get into that. Kamala Harris blames Donald Trump for the deaths of the coronavirus, but no mention of the 60 million Americans that, got, that were affected by the H1N1 swine flu in 2009, 2010, and in the early stages of 2011 under Barack Obama. Not one word of that. Mike Pence saves the day by saying that bringing up the, the Obama medical advisor and political advisor, his name is Ron Klain, who stated that luck of the H1N1 going away quietly and meekly without killing a lot of people saves the day and there's a lot of luck. 
uh, because he admitted that they, they were not prepared. You can't blame any president, you can't blame any leader of any country for something that's airborne that comes in your country. How do you stop that? And no one has that answer. There, there probably is no answer. Stop playing politics with people's lives. The reality is that we will have a vaccine, we believe, before the end of this year. And it will have the capacity to save countless American lives and, and your continuous undermining uh, of confidence in a vaccine is just, it, it's just unacceptable. And let me also say, you know, the reality is when you talk about, about failure in this administration, we actually do know what failure looks like in a pandemic. It was 2009, the swine flu arrived in the United States. Thankfully, it was, ended up not being as lethal as the coronavirus. But before the end of the year, when Joe Biden was vice president of the United States, not seven and a half million people contracted the swine flu. 60 million Americans contracted the swine flu. If the swine flu had been as lethal as the coronavirus in 2009, when Joe Biden was vice president, we would have lost two million American lives. His own chief of staff, Ron Klain, would say last year that it was pure luck that they did, quote, everything possible wrong. And, and we learned from that. They left the strategic national stockpile empty. They left uh, an empty and hollow plan, but we Thank still learn from it. But Kamala Harris, she, she said, if President Donald Trump says it was okay to take the vaccine, she, she, she would not take it. Okay, so but my question is, oh, and Kamala Harris keeps saying, well, I'm listening to science, I'm, I'm never gonna listen to Donald Trump. Well, I wanna ask Kamala Harris a question directly and her supporters and the Democrat followers right now. Okay, if Barack Obama said it was okay to take this vaccine, would you take it? If Hillary Clinton had won the election and said you need to take this vaccine, would you take it? And there was also no mention of this Dr. Fauci, 180 degree flip-flopping on that March 8th, 16 minute segment of, oh, masks are never gonna be necessary and it's okay. We don't even know if it's airborne or not. Not one mention of that. So we know what the answer really is. That's in the Democrat playbook. Anything Trump says, do the opposite, don't listen to him. But then the Kamala Harris sort of harping about how Donald Trump, the, the administration of Donald Trump, it's complete failure about this coronavirus. But then Pence saves the day again by saying that he stopped to travel to China right away. Her boss right now, which is Joe Biden, called Donald Trump a xenophobe and, and criticized that move. We will lead by science. The World Health Organization now has officially, officially declared COVID-19 a pandemic. Downplaying it, being overly dismissive, or spreading misinformation is only going to hurt us and further advantage the spread of the disease. But neither should we panic or fall back on xenophobia. Labeling COVID-19 a foreign virus does not displace accountability for the misjudgments that have been taken thus far by the Trump administration. Okay, why? Because it was fact. Joe Biden was caught at a campaign rally and on a regular news clip saying how Donald Trump was a xenophobe and he's a racist and this and that. Okay, when Joe Biden is a real racist, we all know that. Uh, that's, this is not in dispute anywhere. And so Kamala Harris, she had to eat that one, pun intended. One strange comment Kamala Harris puts in her little tirade against the Trump administration because if people didn't save up enough money for whatever, you know, about this coronavirus pandemic, that, how is that Donald Trump's problem that you didn't save enough money? things that you may not want people to hear, but they need to hear so they can protect themselves. But this administration stood on information that if you had as a parent, if you had as a worker knowing you didn't have enough money saved up, and now you're standing in a food line. Why is that our problem? Because you can't save any money aside. And if it's because you're poor, well, she's covering both bases with this pandering to the poor and minorities. That's her entire voter base is that they need the poor, they need the lower middle class, they need the minorities to vote for them. That's the only way they're going to get in power and stay in power because they are so many. These, these forever states for Democrat strongholds, California, Oregon, New York, the eastern states, I mean, the Democrats have power forever because they have mastered the vote. They have mastered pandering to the poor. They will always vote for the Democrats. And they've been taught to hate the Republicans and hate the people with jobs. I hate the people that's, that's actually feeding them. So that's, that's bad for this country. And I don't mind saying that on my, on my YouTube channel. Kamala Harris never gave any concrete bits of what Joe Biden would have done differently under the coronavirus if he had been president, okay? As, but when pressed, and Harris, she slipped, she said that Joe Biden was gonna do this, gonna do that, and Pence said, you know what? That's just like our, our playbook, and that's plagiarism. That's something that Joe Biden knows a little bit about. 
I mean, and that was that was a, the first that was a great knockdown from a Mike Pence, and then Pence knocks her down again with Kamala Harris's lies about Biden's going to undo the Trump tax cuts. Okay, she tries to water it down with this thing that we no one's seen anywhere on his site or heard about that he's only going to raise taxes on people making over four hundred thousand. Well, what's that? A hundred people in this country, two hundred people made tops. That does nothing for the economy. Okay, if Joe Biden was he's on record by saying he's going to undo the tax cuts that that Trump passed his first year in office in 2017, uh, Biden he just said I'm going to cut I'm going to reverse I'm going to repeal the entire thing. Well, that affects everybody, and Kamala Harris she either doesn't know or just outright decides well I got caught and I got to just ram my way through it. And that's something that she knows a little bit about too. And she just kept saying oh no no that, that's, that's not true. And then Pence comes back again and goes is he going to is is Biden going to just undo part of the tax cuts that Trump got passed? She had no answer. So that was a great knockdown by the Honorable Mike Pence. And then Pence got one more knockdown in when, when they kept asking her about if the Democrats win, if Joe Biden wins on his ticket, will the Dems pack the courts because of this probable nomination of this Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court? I, I couldn't be more proud to serve as vice president to a president who stands without apology for the sanctity of human life. I'm pro-life. I, I don't apologize for it. And this is another one of those cases where there's such a dramatic contrast. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris support taxpayer funding of abortion all the way up to the moment of birth, mm -hmm. late-term abortion. They want to increase funding to Planned Parenthood of America. Now, for our part, I, I would never presume how Judge Amy Coney Barrett would rule on the Supreme Court of the United States, but um, we'll continue to stand strong for the right to life. When you speak about the Supreme Court, though, I think the American people really deserve an answer, Senator Harris. Are you and Joe Biden going to pack the court if Judge Amy Coney Barrett is confirmed? I mean, there have been 29 vacancies on the Supreme Court during presidential election years from George Washington to Barack Obama. Presidents have nominated in all 29 cases. But your party is actually openly advocating adding seats to the Supreme Court, which has had nine seats for 150 years, if you don't get your way. This is a classic case of if you can't win by the rules, you're going to change the rules. Now, you've refused to answer the question. Joe Biden has refused to answer the question. So I think the American people would really like to know if Judge Amy Coney Barrett is confirmed to the Supreme Court of the United States, are you and Joe Biden, if somehow you win this election, going to pack the Supreme Court to get your way? I'm so glad we went through a little history lesson. Let's do that a little more. In 1864... Well, I'd like you to answer the question. No, Mr. Yes. Vice President, I'm speaking. Please, please. I'm speaking. Okay. In 1864, one of the, I think, political heroes, certainly of the president, I, I assume of you also, Mr. Vice President, is Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln was up for re-election. And it was 27 days before the election. And a seat became open on the United States Supreme Court. Abraham Lincoln's party was in charge, not only of the White House, but the Senate. But Honest Abe said, it's not the right thing to do. The American people deserve to make the decision about who will be the next president of the United States. And then that person can select who will serve for a lifetime on the highest court of our land. And so Joe and I are very clear. The American people are voting right now and it should be their decision about who will serve on this most important body for a lifetime. Thank you, and, and Senator the Harris. People, Susan, are voting right now. They'd like to know if you and Joe Biden are going to pack the Supreme Court if you don't get your way in this nomination. Let's talk about packing. You once Come again on, gave a non-answer. Joe Biden gave a non-answer. <laughs> trying to answer you the now. American people deserve a straight answer. And, and if you haven't figured it out yet, the straight answer is they are going to pack the Supreme Court if they somehow win this election. The, Men and women, I, I, I got to tell you, people across this country, if you cherish our Supreme Court, if you cherish the separation of powers, you need to reject the Biden-Harris ticket. Come November the 3rd, re-elect President Donald Trump, and we'll stand by that separation of powers in a nine-seat Supreme Court. Yeah, Thank let's you. talk about packing the court, then. Let's talk about the Please. pack. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to. So the Trump-Pence administration has been, because I sit on the Senate Judiciary Committee, Susan, as you mentioned, and I've witnessed the appointments for lifetime appointments to the federal courts, district courts, courts of appeal people who are purely ideological, people who have been reviewed by 
by legal professional organizations and found to have been not competent are substandard. And do you know that of the 50 people who President Trump appointed to the Court of Appeals for lifetime appointments, not one is black? This is what they've been doing. You want to talk about packing a court? Let's have that discussion. All right, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Let's go on and talk about the issue of racial justice. I, I just want the record to reflect she never answered the question. So I think the American people, thank maybe you. the next debate, Joe Biden will answer the question. Thank you. But I think thank the you. American people know the answer. Thank you, Vice President. And do you know that of the 50 people who President Trump appointed to the Court of Appeals for lifetime appointments, not one is black? I just want the record to reflect she never answered the question. So I think the American people, maybe you. the next debate, Joe Biden will answer the question. Thank you. But I think Thank the you. American people know the answer. Thank you, Vice President. She had three chances to answer that question, and she wouldn't answer that. But later on, she comes and said, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about that. She tries to invoke this thing about Abraham Lincoln in 1864, but it was really 1865 when the war was over. It was wartime, Civil War time. And there was some back and forth about policy discrepancy between the Obama administration and the Trump administration. Mike Pence correctly brought up that uh, Joe Biden was against the task force of getting Osama bin Laden. Kamala Harris had no answer about uh, getting rid of this uh, Soleimani dude in, in Iran that was, was responsible for destroying hundreds of American GIs overseas. And to her, that's probably okay, she, because she doesn't respect the military. You can see that. She couldn't even come up with her own lies about Donald Trump. She had to regurgitate the, the debunked stuff from the New York Times with their anonymous sources that Donald Trump despairs military in this May of 2018. The infamous John Bolton, the disgraced policy advisor who never saw a conflict or war, a potential war he didn't like. When Donald Trump said, you know what, we're not going to bomb Iran, we're not going to bomb Russia, you need to back off. I'm the president, we're going to do things this way. If you don't like it, you can leave. Well, he left, he wrote a book. He just he run Donald Trump through the ground and blah, blah, blah. And it was a back and forth, back and forth. The left took up for John Bolton because he was against Trump. He turned on Donald Trump. But guess what? This John Bolton said that he never said that. He was there. He goes, I'm, I'm telling you 100 percent, President Trump didn't do that. As much as I don't, do not like the president and I'm turn on, I've turned on him, I got to tell the truth. I'm telling the truth. Donald Trump would never disrespect a military like that. And, and I, I don't believe that he ever would. And then here's, what, here's the kicker that no one has talked about. At length, if Donald Trump had really despaired of military back in May of 2018, we got the midterms coming up. That would have really helped Democrats take more seats. Why does it come up now? Because it was a slow news week, and they had to have something. It's attack, attack, attack. They're not going to stop. Okay, and there's one specific reason why Donald Trump has to go in the eyes of the Democrats and even the rhinos. And when you hear that, what that one reason is, is coming out next week. When you hear the one reason why Donald Trump has to go. That's going to, it's going to be a gigantic weight lifted off your head. And you're going to think, you know what? It makes perfect sense. The light bulb is going to go on so hard and so fast and so bright. And you're going to think, wow, I'm just giving you the facts. And you make up your own mind. And Kamala Harris kept saying, well, Senator McCain turned on him and this, this Republican turned on him. Well, yeah, well, they're rhinos. But what Kamala Harris doesn't say was that Senator McCain and now Senator Mitt Romney failed in their bids to get the presidency. And there's other various reasons that they hate this president. Kamala Harris, she doesn't tell people that McCain started this feud and Donald Trump ended it. So Donald Trump, he never disrespected the military and this anonymous source via the Communist New York Times, they were put in their place pretty, pretty hard. And also Kamala Harris, she outright lied twice about Joe Biden said he's not gonna stop fracking. He did, he's said it three times this year. If I get a chance, we're gonna go to the, get rid of the fossil fuels, we're gonna stop fracking, we're gonna stop all. The, the fact checkers said it was inconclusive. And then Pence tagged her and punched her again in the face with this, the Green New Deal is still on the Biden-Harris website. I looked this morning, it's still up there. 
You would think after the debate last night there was someone would have got on there and took it down. They didn't. It's still up there. And Harris tried to blame Pence uh, incorrectly for saying that he voted against saving the auto industry, how Joe Biden did this. Joe Biden, Joe Biden didn't do that. It was Secretary of Treasury under Barack Obama that, that tried to get, get some things back in this country. And Barack Obama famously said, and I'm going to quote, what, Donald Trump's going to get these jobs back? Was he got a magic wand? And I got that video. So Joe Biden didn't do anything. And just uh, he's just trying to take credit for things he didn't do, like he's been doing for 47 years. So Pence saves the day again. He counterpunched her with Miss Harris. You were one of 10 senators who voted against the re renegotiated NAFTA deal of Donald Trump between just the, th the three countries, Canada, the United States, and Mexico. That was her excuse was, well, it didn't do enough for minorities. So that's her reason for voting against the renegotiated deal of getting jobs back in this country. She was she spent the rest of the debate. I'm not going to be lectured by the vice president. You know, she she started turning into Jerry and Ferraro. Uh, don't patronize me to then Vice President George Herbert Walker Bush for the great Ronald Reagan's re-election in 1984. They gave peace a chance, and our allies were with us, the British, the French, and the Italians. Congresswoman Perrault. Let me just say, first of all, that I almost resent, Vice President Bush, your patronizing attitude that you have to teach me about foreign policy. Again, I will not be lectured by the Vice President the, the parallel is George H.W. Bush destroyed Jeremy Ferraro, the very first female vice president candidate in the history of the country, for a major party ticket. And then Kamala Harris starts her thing with, well, the people are voting, and they should have to say on who the next uh, SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States seat is, since Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed. And to Donald Trump's credit, he was very gracious. He was actually shocked when he was caught on live mic and caught on live television when he heard about Ruth Bader Ginsburg's passing. Uh, I thought Donald Trump was... It was A-OK. -okay. The man's got a heart. He felt bad. He only said good things and he could have the flags flown half, half mass for, for her. Uh, Donald Trump was very gracious, went beyond expectations what people keep saying, how he's this, this arrogant, loud mouth, big mouth monster, blowhard from New York City, Queens, and a New York, typical New Yorker. He was kind of sad. I mean, uh, uh, Donald Trump does have a heart and Donald Trump is the man, I'm telling you. What do they do? How do they repay Donald Trump? They keep attacking him. They, they keep making a big issue with this. Kamala Harris and other pundits and other people in the NBA, the, the alphabet, it's all irrelevant. The people already had their say. Six Hammer 666 come had a great video a couple weeks ago. The people already had their say. When they voted for Donald Trump in 2016, that term is for January 20th, 2017, January 20th, 2021. That's the official tour of duty for the sitting president of that term. Okay, Trump won. He gets to nominate the person, and if the, the GOP senators, they're going to put the nomination forward, she's going to be confirmed. They got the votes. Mitch McConnell's already confirmed that twice. It's in the bag. Even Mitt Romney, I think he's written, he sees the writing on the wall. The people already had her say. When they voted for Donald Trump, they're voting for him to make any possible seat replacement. It's like Obama says, elections have consequences. Well, Trump won in 2016. The people already had her say. And Donald Trump gets to pick that person, and that's the end of it. When Mike Pence asked three different times, if, if Joe Biden wins in, in next month, in 25 days, are you going to stack the courts to offset the same Comey Barrett uh, appointment to, for life at the Supreme Court? She, she couldn't answer the question. But we need, as patriots, to stick together for our country. And you need to get Donald Trump in for four more years, keep these communists out of our country, and start kicking them out. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you. Stay tuned for the next video. Always a great day to be an American. Thank you.